Objection. It is not correct, for the clay, etc., cannot exist apart from the lump and so on. In other words, you cannot say that the cause, the clay, for example, is not destroyed when its previous effect, the lump or any other form, is destroyed, but that it passes on to some other effect such as the jar. For the cause, the clay or the like, is not perceived apart from the lump or jar, and so on. Reply. Not so. For we see those causes, the clay, etc., persist when the jar and other things have been produced, and the lump or any other form has gone. Objection. The persistence noticed is due to similarity, not to actual persistence of the cause. Reply. No. Since the particles of clay or other material which belong to the lump, etc., are perceptible in the jar and other things, it is unreasonable to imagine similarity through a pseudo-inference. Nor is inference valid when it contradicts perception, for it depends on the latter, and the contrary view will result in a general disbelief. That is to say, if everything perceived as this is that is momentary, then the notion of that would depend on another notion regarding something else, and so on, thus leading to a regressus in infinitum. And the notion of this is like that being also falsified thereby, there would be no certainty anywhere. Besides, the two notions of this and that cannot be connected, since there is no abiding subject. Objection. They would be connected through the similarity between them. Reply. No, for the notions of this and that cannot be the object of each other's perception, and, since according to you there is no abiding subject like the self, there would be no perception of similarity. Objection. Although there is no similarity, there is the notion of it. Reply. Then the notions of this and that would also, like the notion of similarity, be based on non-entities. Objection by the Yogacara school. Let all notions be based on non-entities. What is the harm? Reply. Then your view that everything is an idea would also be based on a non-entity. Objection by the nihilist. Let it be. Reply. If all notions are false, your view that all notions are unreal cannot be established. Therefore, it is wrong to say that recognition takes place through similarity. Hence, it is proved that the cause exists before the effect is produced. The effect, too, exists before it is produced. Question. How? Reply. Because its manifestation points out its pre-existence. Manifestation means coming within the range of perception. It is a common occurrence that a thing... A jar, for instance, which was hidden by darkness or any other thing, and comes within the range of perception when the obstruction is removed by the appearance of light or in some other way, does not preclude its previous existence. Similarly, this universe, too, we can understand, existed before its manifestation. For a jar that is non-existent is not perceived even when the sun rises. Objection. No, it must be perceived, for you deny its previous non-existence. According to you, any effect, say a jar, is never non-existent, so it must be perceived when the sun rises. Its previous form, the lump of clay, is nowhere near, and obstructions like darkness are absent, so, being existent, it cannot but appear. Reply, not so, for obstruction is of two kinds. Every effect such as a jar has two kinds of obstruction. When it has become manifest from its component clay, darkness and the wall, etc., are the obstructions. 
while before its manifestations from the clay, the obstruction consists in the particles of clay remaining as some other effect, such as a lump. Therefore, the effect, the jar, although existent, is not perceived before its manifestation, as it is hidden. The terms and concepts destroyed, produced, existence, and non existence depend on this twofold character of manifestation and disappearance. Namaste. So there are four kinds of causality. What are they? The material cause, upadana karana. The material cause refers to the substance or matter from which something is made. It answers the question, what is it made of? For example, in the case of a clay pot, the clay is the material cause. It is the underlying matter that takes on a specific form. Two, the efficient cause, nimitta karana. The efficient cause refers to the agent or force that brings something into being. It answers the question, what brought it into existence, or who made it? In the example of the clay pot, the potter is the efficient cause, as they are the one who shapes the clay into a pot. The efficient cause initiates the process of change or creation. The formal cause, rupa karana. The formal cause refers to the form or blueprint of a thing, answering the question, what is it, or what gives it its structure? For instance, the shape of the clay pot is its formal cause. It is the form that organizes the matter, material cause, into a particular shape or essence. Four, final cause, priogena karana. The final cause refers to the purpose or goal for which something is made. It answers the question, why was it made, or what is it for? In the case of the clay pot, the final cause might be to hold water. The final cause is concerned with the end or reason for which the object exists. So the Buddhists and others are very confused about these different types of causes. And they get them all mixed up and reach incredibly spurious and impractical conclusions like everything is momentary, nothing really exists, and the only reason we think there is any continuity from one moment to the other is because of the similarity. But if that's so, then even the idea, their concept, also doesn't exist. And so how can there be any similarity if there is no such thing as a concept? You know, this is so nonsense. <laughs> Of course things exist, and of course they have some reality. Maybe that reality is only temporary, but that's all right. What we see here is a refusal to believe in the pre-existence of both the cause and the effect of the universe. This is the deeper underlying question in all cases. So what is existence? What is reality? And what is cause and effect? Well, on the universal level, it means that the efficient cause of everything is God, Brahman, and that he holds the idea of the universe in his mind or conception, and that it simply becomes manifest at the time of creation. That is, the entire universe is designed from one end to the other, from the beginning to its destruction, and it simply manifests at the time of creation, and then we go through it like, you know, on a train ride or on a, on a ride in a theme park or something like that. But it already exists. And all of us and our lives and everything that happens is already planned out from the very beginning. So, of course, this is a very distressing thought <laughs> for the materialists. They want to think they have agency. They want to think that they can be the cause of something. Well, they can be the efficient cause. 
but they are not the material cause or the formal cause or the ultimate cause huh? because this universe has a different purpose than any of our individuals' existences take into account. The purpose of this universe, the fourth cause, is that it exists for God's self-realization. So because it is ultimately a vehicle for self-realization, that means the whole purpose of this universe, this existence, is nothing but self-realization. And so when we are in tune, when we are in harmony with that cause, everything goes smoothly and is comprehensible and understandable and clear. But when we go against that cause, when we think, oh, this is here for my enjoyment, <laughs> we get into all kinds of trouble. Well, isn't that natural? You know, the potter is making pots to hold liquids and other things, right? So if you come in the shop, the potter's shop, and start breaking pots and throwing them against the floor and like that, he's not going to be pleased. So in the same way, if God makes this universe for his own self-realization, and then you start trying to use it for some other purpose, he's not going to be pleased. This is not going to be good for you. Because so many obstacles will be placed in your path. Not, you know, as, as a matter of punishment, but simply because of the structure of the universe is not aligned with your purposes. It's aligned with God's purposes. So when we realign ourselves with God, instead of our own individual enjoyment and so on, then everything goes smoothly and we avoid the obstacles because we don't try to cross into a, a different purpose. You see? This is why the Buddhists and the materialists, like the scientists, are always experiencing obstacles. Buddhism, these days, has degenerated into a mere external religion, similar to Christianity, only it's Buddha on the altar. They have lost the practice. They have lost the inner focus that the Buddha himself was quite clear about and talks extensively about in his sutras. But they don't read the sutras anymore. Oh yeah, they chant them, but it's simply a matter of formality. They don't really understand what they're saying. This is my experience. I lived in Buddhist monasteries for like four or five years. So the Buddhists are wrong. The materialists are also wrong. The scientists are saying that nothing really exists except for atoms. Atoms are the material cause of everything. Well, if that's true, then they agree with the Buddhists that everything is momentary. Everything is temporary. And there's no similarity from one moment to the other because of the constant Brownian motion and the jiggling of the atomic structures. And, of course, all this is nonsense. Huh? The collapse of the quantum wave function is, is just nonsense. It makes good theory, and it gets grants, huh? so they can live very luxuriously at the expense of the public. But it is not the truth. So try to understand. The actual truth is that God is the cause of everything. And that his design and his purpose is always going to override ours. So if we want a peaceful life, if we want a happy life, if we want to understand what's going on and why things happen the way they do, we should align ourselves with God's purpose. Then everything will make sense. We'll have a nice, pleasant existence in fact, a very blissful existence, and then we'll go on to a much higher state of being in the next life. And that is the whole purpose behind the Vedic literatures. Aum Tatsat. Aum Shakti Aum. 
ओम नमः शिवाय